Hello, and on behalf of Elevator U, welcome. We wanted to do a short video conference of our leadership to talk about what's been going on in our college and universities and our places of business, what we've seen and what we've experienced. We know that we're probably very similar to what all of our membership are experiencing, but we thought it might be good for the membership just to hear from us. And if uh, down the line, if uh, somewhere in the near future, if the membership thought it would be useful, maybe we'll do a, another video conference where we can answer your questions if you have any. And also we could uh, maybe have some interviews with some other of our memberships from other colleges and businesses. So with that being said, I will introduce myself. I'm Eddie Morris, president of Elevator U and Elevator Program Manager at the University of Virginia. Probably about mid-March uh, when the pandemic kind of opened up, that's when we started working from home. And we are in-house elevator maintenance. So with that being said, we had to have boots on the ground. Uh, we have a medical center, so we had to keep those elevators working. We had plenty of COVID-19 patients that came through um, and has still been coming through, I guess. But anyway, uh, we broke up into two-man teams. We thought the reason behind that might be that if, if our two people working any particular week did get sick and they needed to self-isolate, we could then have the next two-man team go on. We had uh, four to five teams of two, so we thought that if someone did get sick, maybe they would be well enough when um, they healed up to be able to come back um, and get back into the rotation. We did have a few working from home, as you can see. I'm at home right now. I do go in as I'm needed, but um, it's usually once or twice a week, and it's not necessarily for all day. We are still doing our maintenance. We did do a abbreviated maintenance. Uh, luckily, our maintenance was good enough to where we could ride out the cleanliness, but we still need to do things like um, elevator phones, fire recall, things like that that was important for monthly PM. We also answered any important elevator calls, any other elevators that wasn't quite as important, they took a back burner and we got to them as we could get to them. We just made sure we took care of the important uh, places like the hospital. So we are wearing masks on campus. We are, uh, we, whether we're in our vehicle, vehicles or in a parking lot or in a building, we're all wearing face coverings. Uh, and our governor actually just said that this Friday, it's gonna be that way for the public as well. Uh, in public, I guess out in the open air will be up to you, but they recommend that. But in all the buildings, it will be masks. Our, our budget has been affected very negatively, like I'm sure many of you have been as well. Uh, we have uh, job freezes. We have uh, no pay raises. We know for the foreseeable future. I'm wondering if it's not two years, but I know one year. And uh, no travel. So it, it really it really hurts us with our Elevator U conferences and uh, United 2020, things like that, uh, because we have no budget. Uh, it's been basically wiped out. We're, we have had furloughs, not in facilities management, but in the medical center. So there, there's a lot of um, bad things going on. We're holding it together. Hopefully things are gonna look better here in the future, uh, but we know we've been impacted and I'm sure many of you have as well. I will uh, pass this on to the next person if they're ready to speak. Uh, Terry McMahon, would you like to um, tell your, what's going on with you? Sure, hi, I'm Terry McMahon. I am the elevator program manager at the University of Michigan. Um, the last day I was in my office was March 16th. Um, we have all been told if we can work from home, we should. If we are, we should continue. Um, when this started back in March, um, we, I have six elevator mechanics on campus and um, we also divided into two, two man uh, rotation. So um, two people would work the week and it's a three week rotation, two people each week. 
They do single uh, man work. None of them are working together or in teams. Um, I canceled all elevator testing. I canceled um, all of our annual state inspections. Um, the university as a whole tried to do everything they could to decrease uh, population and density on campus. Um, all our buildings went into lockdown. If you don't have a university ID and you don't belong in the building, you don't get in. Um, if you can't use the card reader to swipe in, you can't get in the building. Um, it has been moving along that way since March. Um, Michigan is one of the stricter um, states as far as lockdown and quarantine um, with businesses closed and so forth. We've been one of the last few to start reopening things. Uh, about a week and a half ago, our governor said that research facilities could start reopening with um, certain safety measures in place. So the university did start allowing uh, some researchers to come back into their laboratories. Um, we're actually one of the largest research universities in the country. So the thousands of researchers on campus, out of them, about 600 were allowed back on campus and back into their labs. Um, any work that can be done from home still has to be computer information, analysis, data entry, all of that has to be done from home still, even for the laboratories. Um, from an elevator standpoint, because we are starting to reintroduce more population and density on campus, um, all of my elevator mechanics are back working on campus. Um, we have mandatory masks usage in place on campus. Uh, we are still social distancing. Any work that can be deferred has been. Um, we still have not started annual inspections back up with the state yet. I just started allowing elevator tests, safety tests to be um, started up again. And that again is with uh, masks and face shields in place because from an industry standpoint, we know you can't maintain six feet of distance when you're doing a safety test. Um, uh, I'm still from home and um, we, I communicate with the elevator mechanics on a daily basis through text and email, phone calls, um, and we seem to have be able to get through it this way. Um, we still aren't doing any overtime or, um, like I said, any work that can be deferred has been. A lot of our projects have actually been delayed and or canceled. Um, anything that was already in place and has any kind of contractual um, penalties through cancellation are still moving forward. Um, but a lot of our projects have been delayed or canceled. So that's kind of how we're moving forward right now. Um, I, Eddie, I don't know who you have next on your, your list. Um, how about uh, Brad? Uh, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, I, I'm Brad Haldeman from Penn State University. Um, Penn State's main campus where I work at University Park has over 450 units on campus and we maintain those by our in-house crew of 12 who all belong to the, the Teamsters Union. During the first six weeks of the COVID-19 shutdown, we had still a limited number of students and researchers on campus. During that time, we utilized just four of our elevator crew members, one on daylight during the, during the week, one on second shift during the week, one on daylight for the weekends, and one on weekend nights. Our county now just started going into the yellow phase of reopening, and so we have nine of our 12 elevator crew members working. Our campus is still closed to students and most staff. We are performing our elevator repairs and routine PMs with no coverage on weekends, second or third shifts because of no elevator users on campus at those times. Um, Pennsylvania Labor and Industry is our authority having juris jurisdiction. During the shutdown, Labor and Industry did not perform any testing or any inspections except for emergencies or hospitals or 
medical or nursing facilities. Uh, labor and industry just started opening up and they just started performing inspections just for alteration permits only in the yellow phase counties now. Because of the, the financial burden that extended the shutdown and everything, Penn State decided to implement a pay cut of 50% for non-working unionized trade workers. As a result, many of the trades went through a, a period of seniority bumping and uh, of lower seniority personnel. Luckily though, for our in-house elevator crew that you know requires a specialized training and to perform their jobs and that elevators considered life safety importance, there was no bumping of the elevator crew members from the crew. Uh, as per the, the daily routines of our elevator use, we're still up in the air as to how we will handle social distancing in the, in the elevator riders. Um, each of the building's custodial personnel uh, within that skeleton crew that they have on campus now are instructed to frequently, frequently wipe down the elevator hall and car buttons and the elevator car walls. Like everyone else, I'm, I'm sure that as the new guidelines uh, emerge during reopenings, we will develop our formal procedures for the future. Um, and that's all I have. Right. Thank you, Brad. Um, Martin, would you like to go next? Sure. Uh, the University of Maryland uh, has uh, essentially uh, shut down. Uh, construction is still allowed on campus in the construction uh, uh, industry. Uh, as Michigan is, uh, Maryland is one of the stricter states, maybe the strictest state uh, for the uh, stay at home uh, orders. Uh, I'm working from home. Uh, we have, we typically have uh, six mechanics and one helper uh, working shifts at the university normally uh, since the beginning of the um, uh, COVID uh, uh, pandemic, uh, we went to um, one technician on campus uh, uh, for 24 hours a day, so in shifts. So we have one mechanic that works from six in the morning uh, till uh, two thirty in the afternoon. Uh, the helper also works with uh, with that mechanic. Uh, then we have a mechanic comes in at uh, 2.30, works till uh, uh, 11, and then another mechanic that works uh, from uh, 11 until 6 in the morning. Um, the other mechanics will rotate, so tomorrow it will be three different uh, mechanics working. Um, the other mechanics are are not allowed to work the comp the I have my con my mechanics are contractors so the uh, the other mechanics are getting paid for not being here even uh, they are but they are not allowed to work anywhere else uh, the company can't assign them somewhere else on their days that they're not at the university uh, starting next week uh, Monday uh, we will go be going back to full staffing. Uh, but there won't be 24-hour coverage. There'll be all six mechanics and the helper will be on campus uh, uh, in two shifts. Uh, some will start at six and uh, work until um, 2.30 and then the others will come in, I believe it's at 9.30 and work until six in the evening. Uh, and that will be the way we operate for the summer at least. Uh, Nobody knows what the future is. So uh, we'll adjust things as they go. Um, any modernization projects that I have, anything that had a, uh, had a PO uh, already established, we are going to be able to go ahead and uh, proceed with those modernizations and any repair work that's done. Um, Testing and inspections has been suspended. That will uh, resume next week also. Uh, Maryland is a third party state now uh, with the uh, uh, Department of Labor and Industry only doing uh, acceptance tests um, and, and inspections. So uh, 
budgeting. Uh, we don't know what the result of budgeting is, but we know there are going to be severe uh, cut, uh, uh, cuts in budgets. Uh, but again, like I say, if a PO has already been established, uh, it's, uh, it's safe. Um, and that's about where we are in Maryland right now. Thank you, Martin. Um, how, how are we doing on time? Pretty good, Glenn? Um, Glenn Gray is doing awesome. great. Awesome, well, Jeff. Glenn, awesome, Glenn, would, you, Jeff. would you like to say a few things of what you're seeing in the industry? We're still working. We haven't stopped. I'm still at the office. Uh, in Chicago, they shut all the mechanics down to 32 hours a week. And once that happened, we've probably gone down to 50% of what we normally do. Uh, it's, it's, a it's a trying time, but we have to be open for all the hospitals. And every day we have every conceivable elevator company here picking up parts and picking up equipment to go fix elevators um hopefully it'll change so that's what we're hoping and hopefully all of you that are watching this will understand that we want to hear from you too all right we want to schedule one of these meetings we want we want to hear we want to keep elevator view going all right and that's what i got to tell you right thank you glenn uh, Brad, would you like to add a few words? I think you're muted, Brad. Yeah, you're muted, Brad. <laughs> Can you hear me? You're muted. Sorry, guys. You, you By the way, it. that was Uncle with Park Specialists. I don't think he introduced himself. But I'm Brad O'Gwen with the Elevator World Magazine. I've been a board member for almost 10 years now, I think. But uh, I just want to give you a, three or four quick points of kind of what we're seeing. Um, I have talked with about three or four contractors in the last four or five weeks who are 100% going virtual. And what that means is they're getting rid of their physical offices. They're going with warehouses only. And if a mechanic needs PPE or needs anything, it will be delivered to a warehouse and they're picking it up at the warehouse and going to work. So I think the way this virus has made us all think differently in how we do things. And I think we're seeing that being implemented now. Um, I wanna let you know the Elevator World is uh, posting coronavirus updates daily on our website about what's going on in the industry, not only general contra or contractors, but also universities. And I'll be providing the link in this email that we're sending out to you. Um, also think about our July issue is going to focus on elevator disinfection and cleaning uh, that includes products processes and safety enhancements so if any of the universities has anything that they want to add to this please send us your news and we will share that with the industry because i think the more we share with each other the more we learn and i think that's very important and really the last thing is a little bit of a housekeeping as terry likes to say at our conferences is you'll soon find that the United Conference that Elevator U is gonna be a part of in Houston, Texas with NAC has been canceled. Not canceled, but it's gonna to be totally virtual. And we're not exactly sure what that's gonna mean at this point. I don't know if Terry or Eddie has any other comments about that at this point. No it's, uh, yeah, we just know it's gonna be a virtual event, not an in-person event. But our current members, your membership is still valid through June 2021. So we'll, you'll continue to get updates, you'll continue to get the Elevator World Magazine, uh, you'll be in constant contact with us, and we'll make sure to keep you up to date on anything that's happening with the virtual event, with Elevator U, and to make sure you have the most up-to-date information. Um, that's about all I have, Eddie. Um, you, yeah, but- through, uh, Listening to everyone speak, uh, I left out so much, you know, I'm yeah. sure we all did. There's so much information, uh, information overload, but uh, that's what Elevator U is all about. It's about networking. So if you are interested in us doing another video, 
uh, we'd love to put it on. Uh, and I think Brad will send out a newsletter and in that maybe um, he'll ask, is there questions that you yeah. have? And we can specifically- Specific topics on. and questions, yeah. I think is, yeah. And, and maybe uh, we can hear from some other universities uh, at that point too. Um, real quick, Terry, at University of Michigan, um, do you have a return to school yet, or is it going to be online? Do you know? Um, the university has not made any final decisions about the fall semester. Um, the president of the university continues to communicate his hope and desire that we will have a health-informed fall semester. Um, I believe what he is referring to when he says health informed that um, classes that can be done virtually will and that we will have a, a plan in place to be able to have labs and the hands on classes that need to occur that way and that um, the classes that can be done in person will be probably at a reduced capacity. Um, and, you know, with social distancing measures in place and uh, safety protocols. Thank you. Uh, Brad, what about Penn State? What do you know of that? Yeah, similar thing, Eddie. We, you know, the, the governor hasn't made, uh, you know, any announcements yet, you know, to filter down to the university as to how they're going to handle everything, too. So, you know, we're still up in the air, you know, very hopeful, you know, I guess depending on how, you know, a potential second wave is coming and everything and how this you know the phased opening works out for everybody you know will just determine you know our our uh, path forward so. yeah. martin the university of maryland same way maybe well the university of maryland and i failed to say uh when students went on spring break they were told not to come back mm -hmm. uh there were approximately 80 students that um did not have a place to go uh, we have a lot of foreign exchange uh, students, foreign students. So they have been housed in uh, one dorm, I believe, uh, but they were uh, required to be out last week, uh, this week, and next week. Uh, the students that were told not to come back at spring break have been allowed to come back and get their belongings with appointments. Uh, so. Uh, that's where we are. Uh, the University of Maryland will have a new president beginning the 1st of July, I believe it is. Um, uh, that, was, that was in the works before the uh, pandemic came about. Um, so we're working with that. No decision has been made, but it looks like uh, we are going to be approximately 50% uh, distance learning uh, for the fall semester, uh, there th that still hasn't been determined for sure yet, though. Thank you, At the University of Virginia. Um, we're I'm I'm a mix of all of that. We have no idea, so uh, maybe we'll have some more direction in June too. So uh, thank you everybody for um, looking at this video. Thank you for all the leadership here that's participating, and we will be talking to you soon. Thank you.